Um, someone on one of the videos commented that they'd like to have a breakdown of what my um, avion avionics, <laughs> navionics, no, what my what my uh, systems on board are. So um, I've got a, uh, a NEMA 2000 network. This is a new heading sensor, Garmin heading sensor. Um, I've had to add that because up there, and I'll show you from the outside, that's a 0.1 um, GPS and heading sensor, but it's got a, a, an, ob, a, an anomaly, uh, which means that I've had to add another heading sensor. Up there is a Bluetooth receiver for the uh, wind and uh, it's still that's two years that's been disconnected um, so this is the NEMA 2000 uh, which one is it? it's this one here which comes down here that's the VHF radio and down here and here we've got uh, the end of the the backbone that's the um, resistor there so connected here is the heading sensor, the Bluetooth receiver for the wind, and the 0.1 GPS receiver. Down here is the connection for the uh, the log and speed, the DST 800. Uh, this one's spare now because my Wi-Fi dongle has just failed, bastard. Um, so. Oh, uh, it, oh. I should have cleaned up before I made this. So down here is the that's the DST 800 speed, uh, depth, and temperature, and the and the network goes in this uh, conduit. The backbone goes in this conduit, uh, and it comes. Oh, what a, what a mess! It comes up into here. Here's the other end of the of the backbone and the terminal resistor is on the far end there. So connected to this, we've got the display in the cockpit, the radio, the um, uh, AIS transponder, and the autopilot. Now, here's the radio. It's a V50 radio. And I don't know if you can see anything, it's too dark probably, but uh, that's the Camino uh, AIS transponder in the back there. Here is my uh, my fuse box. I've moved it from behind here where I couldn't get it without taking off some screws to behind here. Um, added some extra uh, structural to because of the bending there. Um, yeah, this little buzz bar here is internal lights buzz. Uh, Pos and neg. There's my custom panel. This is the Cymarine Pico battery monitor. Um, so this is the main screen, barometric pressure, time, you can set this UTC or local, uh, battery condition, main battery condition, and charge or discharge state. I haven't got the, the charger plugged in yet. Um, what other pages? So there's the uh, house battery um, with the condition the current voltage and time until either discharge or fully charged when it's charging. So more than 10 days discharge. Uh, and then separately I've got a voltage uh, measurement for the starter battery. And uh, the two batteries, I'll show you in a moment, where the two batteries have got a, a voltage sensitive relay between them. So regardless of whether I'm charging from the alternator or from solar or from shore power, the, they'll both get charged. Um, that's the internal temperature. I could add more temperature gauges and tank gauges, um, but I just haven't got around to it, to be honest. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind a, a fresh water tank, tank gauge, except I don't know how much goes in there, so <laughs> I would have to calibrate it as well. And uh, the barometer which is cool because you can see you've got a long-term trend there three day trend but you can set it to three hours 12 hours 24 hours or long-term three days so you can see in the the green going arrow going up tells you that the pressure is going up and you get arrows going down and it also does some kind of flashy if it changes by too fast a rate which i can't remember what the rate is 
uh, switches for the network, NEMA 2000, autopilot, the uh, Wi-Fi is not for the Wi-Fi anymore, it's for the transponder. My internal 12 volt USB sockets, ah, one of which is here, I've just, I've just um, fitted these guys. Um, so one here and the other one is here. So they're now in convenient places for where the stuff actually is when it when it needs charging. I used to have, you might have seen it on the old videos, a big thing on here. But I've uh, I've taken it off now, and I gave that a slap of paint as well, just to tidy it up a bit. Uh, my main uh, house battery is in this compartment here, which is a dedicated battery compartment because it's a very heavy battery it's uh, 218 ampere hours it weighs 60 kilos so it's extremely secure in there and then in here we've got to, uh, what have we got in here Just move these out of the way. obviously I'm not in sailing mode which is why it's all a bit of a mess so this is a starter battery in here it's a 75 Ampere starter battery is more than adequate and it's always charged. Uh, negative main uh, neg buzz there. Um, my initial design was a bit off, um, so I had a big buzz here and a small buzz behind there. Really, I should have had them the other way around. And now I've got uh, a big pause and neg buzz behind here, so this one hardly gets used at all. There's a positive. Um, stud here which actually the boatyard in Falmouth fitted that when they when they built the um, battery box for me um, but it's not really what I wanted I wanted a buzz rather than a stud but uh, you know it was too late it was already fitted um, this is the solar controller here and this is the um, battery charger from shore power here which I even when I'm sitting here in the marina I rarely plug that in because I don't need it because the solar power does everything and this is the shunt for the battery monitor put some light on it doesn't make any difference that's the VSR the voltage sensitive relay <coughs> which uh, will connect the two batteries together whenever there's a charging source on either side on one side is the alternator <coughs> and that's on the, the uh, starter battery side and uh, on the other side is the shore power and the um, and the solar. They're both Victron um, products, the shore power and the solar charger. They're cool. Oh, and here is the battery switch. It's a combined, uh, it's a dual switch. So it turns both the batteries on or off. And you can combine them using this setting here. There's a combined function on the VSR, but I don't use it. If I was going to use it, actually, I've I've used this once or twice just to check that it works, um, and then you get uh, both of the batteries going to the starter motor. But to be honest, the engine starts up perfectly on the every time on the on the engine battery. Um, she just takes a couple of revs to put out the um, the low oil pressure warning we we'll just have to start up just because you know she's loose loosey goosey and it's a um a yanma 2 q m15 from from the 1970s there she is a uh, little bit dirty like everything but, uh, so that's uh, the 2QM throttle and the stop is there. Obviously that's the fuel control unit and fuel filter. Um, that's the water pump is here. Um, so to get to the impeller, which is at the, in, in the housing here, you have to take the whole water pump off. You have to undo two bolts here, get, the, get it off, uh, get the belt off, pull it off, turn it around, then you can take the backing plate off. So uh, obviously more modern engines have got a much easier access to impellers than this one. Luckily I never seem to have any problems with it. Back there's my uh, Raycor filter on the fuel line here. That's the water in that with a Blake Seacott with strainer. The strainer's always good, checked it recently. 
Um, what else to see? Ah, this is the uh, the greaser for the stern tube, old-fashioned greaser. These cables go down to the uh, bilge pump, which is down there. It's too dark to see. Uh, the compression lever is there. I have hand started this twice. I failed to hand start it about a dozen times, so I don't bother trying anymore. I guess if I was really desperate, the adrenaline would kick in and I might eventually get it going. But uh, yeah, it started off, I mean, I was really surprised. The first time I tried it, I succeeded. But uh, after that, the next, next time I tried it, it didn't work. All right, I gotta put the camera down to put this back. So, then we'll go outside. So the autopilot is connected to the network. And now that I've got the new heading sensor fitted, everything's working properly. So I can show you, um, this is the, the um, tri Triton 2 display, which has really got everything you could ever want in a, in a sailing instrument. So this is a sail steer page um, with true and apparent wind, the indicators. Uh, the yellow dot there is the waypoint. And I set the waypoint in the radio because the radio has got a nav function. It's connected to the network. So if I set a waypoint in the nav radio, it shows up on here so I can steer to it. This is the boat's course over the ground. You see we're not moving so it's parked on north right now and heading. And then port and starboard tack and it uh, calculates those uh, ley lines for you. You can set various parameters for them. Um, the AIS display is here, heading display, this is this one I use for performance because here we've got uh, apparent wind angle and speed and VMG so that's a performance page. This is an easy heading page although we can see my super cool old compass right there and they are now because I've just literally in the last two hours I've spent an hour and a half motoring in circles to calibrate the compass correctly and it's finally finally uh, calibrated so look there's the autopilot in standby mode and back here is the autopilot it's actually i've upgraded to a tp32 um the 22 was fine but uh in uh, in heavy quartering winds it struggled a little bit and it was started to make funny grinding noises it still works perfectly well but uh, I thought I'd try 32 and so far it's been brilliant so um, I can put it into um, autopilot mode and we can see on here that it's now in heading hold mode but uh, if I was sailing along and trying to you know trying to sail on the wind I could put it into wind mode to put it in wind mode you push these two together boop, boop, boop. And there we can see it would now hold an apparent wind angle um, which is good for going upwind but it's no good for going downwind because when you're going downwind the apparent wind um, angle changes rapidly as you accelerate and decelerate off waves um, the boat would end up steering all over the place if you tried to sail on uh, apparent wind downwind which is why I'm gonna put this back into standby now so you can see it's back in standby mode. That's why all the race boats use uh, true wind steering downwind. Because uh, apparent wind steering sends you all over the place. Um, yeah, so that's it. Autopilot. Uh, what else systems wise have we got? Well, um, for, for navigation, I've got the iPad. iPad's currently in its relaxation stand there. So I can watch movies and YouTube while I'm not enough to sleep and of course the um, the Garmin um, InReach InReach Explorer Plus or whatever it's called that's my tracker um, an old Tide computer there which still works but it's much easier just to look it up on my iPhone um, and that's about it really I've got um, oh, got some washing up to do but that's my galley that's all I've got, little handheld radio. Oh, here's new. Um, you might have seen on some of the old videos, there was a big, like a, a pipe sticking out of here, like a chimney, but it was actually um, a homebrew mount that the previous owner made for his little handheld Garmin. Um, 
it was a bugger to get it off but uh, I've replaced it with something fancy this looks looks nicer just a vent so uh, yeah that's finally gone that's one of the many little modifications I made this time around yeah so that's it really that's the, all the systems on to show you the um, the receivers on so that you saw them from below and this is from above that's the point one and that's the Bluetooth receiver for the for the wind and they're my Dorade, Dorade, Dorade boxes in deep need of some scraping and uh, and varnish and that's going to be my job next week after I've been sailing again for a bit.